to give our condolences. Thank you. Thank you so much. Advocate Emily is the chair of the Parents Association of Chabakali National School. I once again, Mama Jo and Papa, say poorly. We can feel the pain of losing a beloved child. It is only God who can heal you. And that is our prayer for the family. To the Chabakali boys, particularly the classmates of Joe, we are also very sorry that you have lost such a dear friend. If God were to appear to me the way he appeared to Solomon in the night and he had a need to take a student from Chubakali National School, we have a dozen students whose ways might be suspect. Maybe I would have made a mistake and offered a name of one errant student, but not John. This is one boy who is very compassionate. I just want to pick out one incident that really made me very sad when I learned that Joe has slept. Mama, when Joe came back from home the, for his last term, we have what we refer to the institution as a mercy kitty. This is a kitty that contributes to the needy students in the school. When the class teacher went to the class of Joe, to ask those ones who had uh, not paid. Interestingly, not all had begun paying. When he asked who has the money for the kitty, Joe was the first one. And because of that, he unlocked the rest of the class towards giving to us the same. And that's why we are very sorry. May the Lord heal your hearts. May the Lord visit this particular family in a very, very special way. I'm standing here on behalf of the Ministry of Education in Vihiga, the regional director in Western have called me and have said, please convey our condolences to this family. I once again say, Polesana, we are working together this journey and in such a time, we see to it that Joe is fully rested in the hands of his maker. My name is Edward Wachilonga, the principal of our late son. God bless you. We are keeping you in prayer when you're praying for us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Chief Principal of Chavakali, National School, Edward Wachilonga. Thank you for coming, and thank you for coming with the board, and thank you very much, um, even Madam Emily, for conveying on behalf of the parents. Uh, we really, really do appreciate your coming and being here. And of course, we know that even for the school, the Chavakali uh, High School students, this is also a big blow to you, and not just to you, but also uh, to all the youth and young generation in this country, especially those ones who knew Joe, I believe you are touched in a very unique way because from the tribute shared, this was a very special young man. He was outstanding in everything that he did. We have heard about his strengths in terms of his mental attitude in terms of his uh, uh, sportsmanship, in terms of his emotional intelligence in interacting with others. He was exceptional. And, and so we uh, just want to say to each one, I'm sure touched by this, that may the Lord comfort you and give you strength. We are also coming here, I represent Nairobi Chapel, Karen. I am the senior pastor there. My names are David uh, Kabibi, and I'm not here alone. I'm also here with other pastors who uh, joined us as well. And in particular, we have the teens pastor, that is uh, um, uh, the pastor who oversaw 
um, uh, Joe in this last few years. And that's Pastor Hega in Biaka, he's in the house and he has told me uh, without a shadow of a doubt that yes, their loss is great. Because Joe was here, one young man who made sure that when he was here on holiday, he came to church. And this is something he began from when he was very young. That from a very young age, he could even hike a lift from his neighbor by the name of Api when his mom was away so that she brings him to church. We have his testimony to know and we have had it that he knew the Lord. He knew the Lord as his personal Lord and Savior. And as I was speaking to the family on Sunday, I was talking about Jesus, who is the life giver. And knowing that, yes, he has transitioned. Yes, we miss him. But he has transitioned into glory. Because he knew Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. And that gives us some level of comfort. But what do you say to a family? What do you say to a mother who has lost a dear son? What do you say to a father who has lost his son? What do you say to grandparents who are here? His grandmother, Mrs. Gioshe, and the, his grandparents, the Wadulos who are here. What do you say to them? What words of comfort can you give to the younger brother by the name of Jeremy? And today as we gather for the next few minutes, we just want again to turn to God's word and ask, Lord, what word do you have today for us that would comfort us? And I want to say to us here that our circumstances shape us in very real ways. Our circumstances shape us in very real ways. This loss is huge and it has touched everyone, especially the family, deeply. But looking at history, we see that men of courage have had the greatest impact on humanity. When we look at the scriptures, we see that even the very young make an impact. We read in the Old Testament about a young boy by the name of Samuel who was set apart for his mother that he would be able to be given fully to the service of God. And even below the age of 10, God spoke to him and gave him a word that he would be able to give to the chief priest of the day, a man by the name of Eli. We read also that it was a young man, possibly not much older than Job, who slayed a giant by the name of Goliath and saved a nation. We read that it was another young man by the age of, at the age of 17 years, who was sold by his brothers into slavery. And God, working in mysterious ways, was able to use this same young man to save a nation. Jesus, our Savior, was only 33 and a half years old when he was crucified. For some of us, we consider that young. And yet we know that it is through his death and resurrection that changed the world. It is through his death and sacrifice that today we know that Joe has transitioned into glory. It is through his death and sacrifice that we know that for all of us who have hope in Christ, that we will not die. Yes, we will die in the flesh as Joe has, but we will transition into eternity. So please allow me this, this afternoon for the next 30 minutes or so to focus us on scriptures. Because we know that it is in such circumstances that in scripture we find hope and encouragement to face life when we have nowhere else to turn but to the Lord and to his word. Please allow me to turn to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30. I'll be reading a story uh, from 
1 Samuel chapter 30 from verses 1. I will try and pick up um, the passages and move on quickly. If you can follow with me, if you have your Bible with you, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 30. And I will read. It says, David and his men reached Ziklag on the third day. Now the Amalekites had raided the Negev and Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag and burnt it, and, it, and had taken captive the women and everyone else in it, both young and old. They killed none of them, but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men reached Ziklag, they found it destroyed by fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. David's two wives had been captured, Ahimam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, bring me the effort. Abiathar brought it to him. And David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. David and the 600 men with him came to the vessel valley where some stayed behind. 200 of them were too exhausted to cross the valley. But David and the other 400 continued the pursuit. They found an Egyptian in a field and brought him to David. They gave him water to drink and food to eat. Part of a cake of pressed figs and two cakes of raisins. He ate and was revived, for he had not eaten any food or drunk any water for three days and three nights. David asked, who do you belong to? Where do you come from? He said, I'm an Egyptian, the slave of an Amalekite. My master abandoned me when I became ill three days ago. We raided the Negev of the Caliphites, some territory belonging to Judah, and the Negev of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag. David asked him, can you lead me down to this raiding party? He answered, swear to me before God that you will not kill me or hand me over to my master and I will take you down to them. He led David down. And there they were, scattered over the countryside, eating, drinking, and reveling because of the great amount of plunder they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from Judah. David fought them from dusk until evening of the next day. None of them got away, except 400 young men who rode off in camels and fled. David recovered everything the Amalekites had taken, including his two wives. Nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl, plunder or anything else they had taken. David brought everything back. He took all the flocks and herds. His men drove them ahead of the other livestock, saying, this is David's plunder. Then David came to the 200 men who had been too exhausted to follow him and were left behind at the best of valley. They came out to meet David and the men with him. As David and his men approached, he asked them how they were. But all the evil men and troublemakers among David's followers said, because they did not go out with us, we will not share with them the plunder we recovered. However, each man can take his wife and children and go. David replied, No, my brothers, you must not do what the Lord has given us. He has protected us and delivered into our hands the raiding party that came against us. Who will listen to you or to, to what you say? The share of the men who stayed with the supplies to be the same is to be the same as that of him who went down to the battle. All will share alike. David made this a statute, an ordinance for Israel from that day to this. We see from this passage of scripture, and today I want to say this, that our circumstances can shape us 
in very real ways. We know that in life we are, we are not assured that everything will go according to plan. We know that in life we will meet challenges, problems. In life we will lose even those that we deeply love, as in this case here. But I want to say this, that the circumstances we go through, the Lord intends that they will shape us. That they will change us. That they will make us better. That this circumstance, and I'm speaking even to the family, but also to the young people who are here and to the school that is here, that may what has happened, may the loss of joy not be in vain. May it shape us. May it shape us to be men and women who will live our lives in such a way that we will impact others. And the reason I say that and why I picked that this story from the book of First Samuel chapter 30 is because I see three lessons. Three lessons that we can pick out from David that possibly will help us moving forward. That possibly will help us deal with this grief and this loss. And the first is this. That God is dependable. And it is in Him that we find strength. That God is dependable. And it is in Him that we find strength. David was in a critical moment of his life. He has just come from hiding from Saul because Saul, who was king, wanted to kill him because he was jealous of David. And so David discovered that Saul, through his security details, through his, uh, um, uh, what we call, intelligence, had covered the whole nation of Israel and David had nowhere to hide. So what he planned to do is that he moved into the Philistine territory and that's where he was hiding. Because he knew among the Philistines, Saul would not find him. So what he did is that he left his wife, wives and the wives of his men and his children in the place that, 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 that we read about. And when he left them there, he proceeded to Ziklag. He proceeded to Philistine. He left them in Ziklag because Ziklag was a safe neighborhood. It was in Judah where he came from. He knew that in Judah, Saul would not be able to access him because the people in Judah were his own people. So he knew that when his wives and children were in Judah, they were safe. And he proceeded with his men. And he lived amongst the Philistines. In Philistine, he was able to befriend a, 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 a prince there by the name of Akish. And they became such good friends that Akish was considering David to become his bodyguard for life because he knew that David had actually left his own territory in Israel and had become such a stench, if I may use the word in Israel, that he was no longer acceptable. And so what Akish wanted to do is keep David, adapt him. Why? David was a gifted man. From the young age of 17, we know that David was able to slay a giant. Why was he able to slay a giant? Yes, of course he slayed the giant because God gave him the ability and he had skills. And God helped him to do that. But David was a skilled warrior. He was a skilled fighter. He was a man who could kill a lion and a bear out of skill. He was a military man. And so Akish knew that by having David on his side, just as you heard from the uncle saying that when Joe was on your team, you could win. Because Joe had those abilities, he had those skills. He was a sportsman by excellence. That you know that if he's in your team, your team will win because he's not only skilled, he's also competitive with a great mental attitude. And David had those abilities. And so Akish knew that he was going to benefit by having David on his side. And so what the Philistines had planned to do is that they planned to attack Israel. 
And a priest came to David and said, you know, we are about to attack Israel. Will you join us as we attack Israel? And David said, of course, you are like my brother. If you attack Israel and you ask me to join you, I will. And I'll fight with you and I'll fight for you as my brother. But Akish also was moving into this war with other princes from Philistine. And when the other princes came, they said they can't trust David. Because if they go into battle, David will join with the enemy. That is his nation, the Israelites, and attack them. So the rest of the, the confederation of princes refused and David was sent back home. And that's when, when he came back home and got to Ziklag, he finds that Ziklag has been attacked, that the place has been burnt down, that his wives and the wives of the men are missing, that all the children are missing, and that men and David were so devastated. It says that they wept until they could weep no more. They were devastated. What has happened? You come and you find no one. It was a difficult time. And they wept. But what made the situation worse is that now the men who were with David blamed him. And they wanted to stone him. They wanted to kill him. And this was so devastating to David because these are men he had raised. These are men he had loved. These are men he had picked up when they were in debt, when they were disillusioned, when they were basically desperate. And he put them in and he trained them. He loved them. He trained them because it was a skill. He was also very good in training. And they became very good warriors. And now these men that he had given hope to and direction to are the ones who are thinking of killing him. He was so devastated. But there's something about David. And there's a lesson for us all today. That it says David found strength in the Lord his God. And I want to say to us today, when we seek strength in God, it is not easy. This loss is great. But when we find our strength in the Lord our God, because that's what David did. And that encouraged him. And because he realized, as we can say, and I've said this, I said this on Sunday, and I'll say it here that we have a God who we are told in Hebrews 13.5 that he will never leave us nor forsake us. That in a moment such as this, that as we go through the pain we are going through, and especially the family, may I assure you that the scriptures are true when they say that we have a God who will never leave us no forsake us. And when David looked back and reflected, he saw it is true. God had been with him. God had been his shepherd that when he faced a giant, he was able to kill him because God helped him. And he realized this same God who helped me with Goliath, who helped me even today. This same God who helped me kill a lion, who helped me today. This God who helped me kill a bear, who helped me today. And he strengthened himself. And the next thing he did, is that he asked for the effort. Let me explain and say that an effort is a garment that is made of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, skillfully woven, and it is worn over the shoulder, and it has two stones, and on those stones of onyx mounted on them are different uh, uh, precious stones, six on the right side and six on the left side. And each of these stones is engraved the nations or the tribes of Israel. And when the priest wore this effort, it reminded God of the covenant that he had given to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. 
about the nation of Israel. So that when the priest went before God to pray, God would remember that covenant and would answer. Today, what is our covenant? I want to ask us. Which covenant do we have with God? Do we have a covenant with God? We do. And that covenant is a covenant that was sealed in the blood of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's when, why when we come to God in prayer, we come through the name of Jesus. Because it is that name, the one who is the Lamb of God who shed his blood for us. So that when we pray, we pray in Jesus' name and God is able to hear us pray. And David knew this truth and he asked for the effort and he prayed and he saw God and he said, can I follow this man? Will I overtake them? And God answered. And he said, yes, surely you will. And you will overtake them. And so David gathers his 600 men. They have not even rested. They've been mourning and weeping. Possibly they haven't eaten. And they set out. As they set out, 200 became too tired. They couldn't continue. So they were left behind. He went with 400. And with the 400, he was able to conquer this army. And come back with so much plunder. And so much loot. But I want to say to us here, and this is the second lesson, that God gives direction in very difficult circumstances. When we approach Him in the name of Jesus, have you understood me? That God gives direction in very difficult circumstances when we come in the name of Jesus. And I want to say to you as a family, that God will give direction. That God will give direction. He will give direction. Because one of the things that I see is that this young man, so young, full of potential, his future was bright. The question is, why now? be now. Yet, this was possibly one of our future leaders in our nation. Why did he have to go so young? And I want to tell you today, I don't know. There are some things that God does that only he knows. And I want to say that God knew this. Nothing can surprise the Lord. Our God knows everything he is almighty. He is all-knowing. And only He knows. But this is what I know. And I think this is important for us to know. I know that He is at a better place. That the Lord has called Him home. The Lord has called Him young. But yet when I listen to the tributes here, this is a young man of 17 who had possibly achieved more than many people at 50 would have achieved. What is amazing is to know that wherever he went and whoever he contacted, he left an impact. Whether it was at the Word of Life camp, whether it was in church, whether it was in the neighborhood, whether it was at home, whether it was with his uncles, with his parents, grandparents as well he left an impact and my prayer for you who are young who are here because I want to address you because you are the present future that's who you are that may your friendship with Joel and the values he stood for may you continue with those values values for hard work. His values for being concerned about the welfare of others as we've heard from the chief principle today. His concern for everyone. The care that he had that one young man here shared and said that he had lost his father and he was feeling hopeless. I believe it is that young man by the name of Bob and he was thinking of getting into drugs. But Jim was able to turn him around. 
the young people like Joe, who will seek to make a difference and an impact where we are. Can you be such? And for that to happen, I would say there is no secret for you to succeed in what you do. The book of Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6 tells us that trust in the Lord with all your heart. Live not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. So if you are here, trust in God. Trust in God. Trust in God. He will make your path straight. Because it is God who gives direction in very difficult circumstances when we seek him in Jesus' name. And so it is our prayer. I know we are asking questions. Why did he have to pass on now? What would have happened if he didn't have to take that bus at night? What would have happened? And I want to say to us, and now saying to us who are older, let's take care of our young people. Let's do the best that we can to protect them. Let's try and make decisions that are informed by logic. That when we release our young people, we know we are releasing them in a time when it is safe. Let's protect our young people. They are our present future. Let's take responsibility for our people. That wherever we serve, we will do our work well. That if you are in the church like I am as a pastor, that I will talk to the congregation. Because I know it is in this congregation that we have those who are responsible for decisions in this country. So that we make the right decisions. So in whatever responsibility you have, again, it is God who gives us direction in difficult circumstances. Let's see God so that he gives us wisdom. seek his wisdom. And the third thing that we see in the story of David is that when he came back with the loot or the plunder, they got to the place where the 200 men were. Remember the 200 men hadn't gone to war. They were what we call Jivinjari. And they were there. And the other 400 come and they come with so much. Women, the, 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 the wives, the children, and they bring them. And they and accompany that is all the plan that they had taken. And David is so happy to see his men. And David asks them, how are you guys? What David wanted to find out is that, have you recovered? Are you rested? You guys were exhausted. How are you doing now? It is the same story I hear about Joe. That when Joe met his friends, he would ask, how are you? How are you doing? And I pray that we'll be such people. That we want to find out how people are. That that will be our concern. The welfare of others. That was David's concern. But he had men who are not like David. And for them they say, hey, hey, no, 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 no. You guys didn't go to war. These things belong to David and to the men who went to war. And we will share them out. You guys take your wives, take your children and go. But David said, no. That is not right. Because the victory that we have belongs to God. He gave us victory. And because he gave us victory, everyone who went and everyone who stayed will share equally. And the lesson here is this. That God requires grace in victory and also grace in our time of difficulty that we can show each other grace and my prayer is this that this has happened we have lost a brilliant young man it is hard it will totally totally change the landscape of a family the landscape changes they will not have the presence of Joe anymore. They lived with him. They saw him every day. 
It will mean that for the mother, the father, the brother, the close relatives, including the grandparents, will not see him again. Their landscape has tilted. Their landscape has changed. And it will take them a long, long time to recover. For the rest of us, it will take us, we are impacted, but it will take us less time to recover. My request to us today, all the communities here, the family, the church, the school, the community, let's deal with each other with grace. Let's embrace each other. Let us not cast blame on each other. Let us show grace. Let us say we celebrate a life. We celebrate a life of a young man who lived his life well. Who fought the good fight. Who finished the race. Who kept the faith. Let us embrace each other. Let us move from here forward saying that we want to embrace each other. That we want to say that the loss of joy is our loss. And because the loss of joy is our loss, let's embrace each other. Let's ask ourselves, how can we support each other? How can we support this family? How can we walk with Mama Jo Wangari? How can we walk with Baba Jo Morrison? How can we walk with Jeremy? How can we embrace them? How can we remember them and visit them? How can we love them? It is our loss. It is our loss. When we embrace each other, when we pick on the attitude of David, an attitude of grace, and we embrace each other, we will transform this nation one step at a time. Because it is through unity and strength. It is through grace and comfort. It is through looking out for your brother and your sister. It is through inculcating a, 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 an attitude of love and loving one another that we will start to progress. That we say, let's put the blame aside. Let us seek to make a difference. Let us seek to support. Let us seek to heal. Let us seek to embrace. Let us seek to unite. Let us seek to change what is not right. And walk this journey. What is painful is that Joe represents this nation. I was saying on uh, Sunday when I was at the home that when I looked at the congregation gathered and today is the same thing. Majority here are under 25. And that's the face of this nation. And because it is the face of this nation this represents our future, our present future. And when we bury a young person because we say the correct order of things is not for parents to bury children. It's children to bury their parents. Because when parents bury the children, it's as if we are burying our hopes. Can we come together as a people and say that we will not bury our hopes? Can we come together as a people and say that we will stand united and pray that our country will change? That this thing of seeing accidents that are taking our young people, that it will stop. Can we pray to the Lord God Almighty? But prayer is not enough. Prayer is followed by action. That's what David did. He prayed. And when he had God, he took action. To go and change the situation and rescue his family. Because God was with him. I believe if we come together as a people, we will change this nation. But let's not just pray. Let us pray and take action. What is the action that you need to do as an engineer? What action do you need to take as a doctor? What 
What action do you need to take as a student or a teacher? What action do you need to take as a lawmaker? What action do you need to take as a law enforcer to make a difference? Because we are not going to bury our hopes. We are not going to bury our hopes. We are going to stand together as a church we will pray. And as a church we will challenge us that each of you who sit here that you will ask yourself the question and say I'm going to make a difference in my area of influence because I'm going to be different and I'm going to do what is right. May the Lord help us and may the Lord hear us as we pray. At this moment we want to take a moment to be able to pray. Because as we conclude that prayer, we want to take time and pray. We want to pray for the family. And I want to lead those prayers in praying for the family. But we also want to say another special prayer. And it is a prayer for the young people in this country. And I'll be inviting Apostle Peter Thuo to pray for the young people in this country. And so if you do not mind, Allow us that we can be able to pray. And I'm going to invite all the ministers who are here. If you're a minister of the gospel, meaning that you're a pastor, you're, you're an elder, you're a bishop, you're an apostle, you're a reverend, we will ask you to come up, even as I invite the family to come up. I'm inviting the family to come up, that we can be able to say this prayer from this pulpit at Sitam Karen. We want to pray for the family because their loss is great. But you also want to pray for the youth of this nation. Because we do not want to bury our hopes. We want action taken from here forward. So may I invite the ministers who are here. The family, please, if you do not mind. Family, please do come. Please do come. I want the family to come and stand here. I'm going to ask uh, 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 Apostle Peter Thuo, join me at the pulpit so that you can pray from up here. And I'm going to ask the family members to come. Do come. Family. Family do come. Family do come. So that we can pray. That we can pray. That we can pray. I'm, I'm happy that and as we pray for the young people I will ask the, his classmates who are in Chabakali are you here? his classmates from Chabakali do come the board do come uh, from Chabakali the teachers who are here as well from Chabakali come because this is a prayer for the family yes but it's also a prayer for our young people in this nation of Kenya do come We want to pray. And if you're a minister and a pastor, you can come and surround them from the back. Any pastors here in the house, pastors, any pastors in the house, do come. That you can stand behind this family. I can see some pastors who are here. Uh, Karibuni Sanan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The rest of us, please stand on your feet uh, as we say this prayer. I will begin the prayer and then um, Apostle Peter Thuo will conclude as he prays for the youth in this nation. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come before your throne, lifting up your name. You who is holy, you who Isaiah saw in that vision, high and lifted up, that your robes filled the temple, and around you were cherubims who were saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. And it is to you, Lord, that we come today. Knowing that you are a loving Father, 
Knowing that Lord, that Lord, when you saw just our fallenness, you gave us your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is in his name that, Lord, we come before your throne. It is through his blood that was shed on Calvary that, Lord, we come to you. And today, Lord, I want to remember this family. And I want to pray for them in the powerful name of Jesus. The Lord, you who sees us, Lord, who sees their pain, who empathizes with us, you who says that you will never leave us nor forsake us, Lord, I pray that may you walk with them. Lord, they are walking in a valley. We are told by David as he writes in the Psalms that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. So with that, Lord, we ask for your presence. May your presence surround Mama Jo Wangari at this moment. May your presence go before her. Her pain is deep. She has lost a son. It is not easy. Oh Lord, would you remember her in her pain and in her grief. Lord, would you assure her in your warm embrace that Lord, the future is okay. Because Lord Jesus, you say it is well. It is well. May it be well with her at the moment it's painful and it is dark. But Lord, may your light shine through for her. I pray for her very specifically, Lord. That Lord, you will be with her. That you will be her shepherd. That Lord, you will be her guide and her redeemer. That Lord, you will walk with her even when there are moments that she can only walk some places alone with no company at all. That Lord, may you be with her in those dark valley moments. Lord, may you be with her. Lord, I pray for Morrison. His pain is great. He may not even know how to express himself. But he has lost a son. And he's deeply grieving as well. Lord, would you remember him? Lord, would you visit with him? Lord, would you assure him of your love for him? And may he know that today, that because we are confident of the fact that John knew you and he has transitioned to be with you, Lord, may he also know that it is well. Oh, Lord, would you comfort him? Would you comfort him, Lord? Our prayers go to Jeremy. Young, possibly not coming to terms fully, with what has happened. But he will grow knowing that he had a brother and he'll be asking questions. Where would my brother be? What would my brother be doing? And because he's young, Lord, would you help him deal with his grief? Would you walk with him? Would you guide him? Would you give him people around him full of wisdom to help him navigate through a, a, a place where few would know what he's really dealing with. It will be lonely, Lord, but may you surround him with people who will help him. I pray for his mother. I pray for others around him to just walk with him and guide him. And Lord, I can't forget to pray for the grandparents who also are grieving. Oh Lord, it's so hard to lose a grandchild. It's hard. Because we say it's as if you're burying your hopes in the ground. Lord, would you assure them of your goodness, that it is well, that, that Joe is gone, but he has transitioned to a better place, that in Joe's place will come even others who do even greater things, who will rise and shine like stars. Oh, Lord, would you do that? So we commit them to you and pray for the uncles and aunties who are here as well, that in their pain and in their grief, Lord, remember them and comfort them as well. I pray for this whole family. Lord, remember them and fill them with your grace. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Dear loving Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, once again, Lord, we come before you in this tough time. We remember the brothers, the friends, of joy, dear Lord, whom you have taken home to be with you. And it's hard for them to process this in pain and grief. How we pray, dear Lord, that your covering and your protection will be upon them.
But oh God, your comforting masses will come upon this young generation as they see this as a scare, dear Lord. We pray that your strength will be upon them, that Lord, you will comfort them and strengthen them, that their hopes will not be crushed, Lord, but the good times and the memories and the things they shared and the dreams they shared together with Joe will come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we commit all the shared memories to you that, Lord, there will be propellers for them to rise into greater accomplishments in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we pray specifically for the, for the, the team and the children, all the students from Chavakali High School, that, oh God, your hand of comfort will be upon them. We pray that as they process the loss of one of their dear ones, Lord, in the basketball team, in the football team, in the class, oh God, as they look forward to, as they are looking forward to great things together, that Lord, your grace will suffice to encourage and strengthen them, dear Father. We pray that this will bring, my Father, positivity and not hopelessness in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that your strength will be upon them, dear Father, that even as they have talked about the motivation that Joe was to them. Lord, may the same spirit be upon them that they will be strong. May the same grace be upon them, dear Father, that they will be go get us for better things. We pray for the close friends who are together in the life camp, that Lord, you will strengthen them, that you will heal their hearts. We pray for Malaika and the team and Bobo. We pray for Bo and the others, oh God, that your grace will be upon them. That your hand of comfort will be upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. That Lord, they will look into fulfilling what they wanted to do together with Joel. And Father, we pray not just for this, but we see that there is a trend of accidents, oh God, that is targeting our young people. And Father, we lift up a prayer before you as a church. We pray that, Lord, this will come to an end. We come against the spirit of premature death. We come against the spirit of theft of our children, our future and our dreams, Almighty Father. As parents and as grandparents, Lord, we lift up a prayer in unity to you that, Lord, you will stop the scourge of accidents and death that has been invading our country from every corner. We bind the spirit of destruction in the name of Jesus Christ. That spirit that is hunting for the vision and the future of this country. We rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. We stop every recklessness on the roads, oh God. We know that ministry policies are not enough. We know that you are able to stop the spirit, Lord. Even as our government works hard with the policies and the change of strategies, oh God, we pray for your intervention. We pray for your intervention, oh God. We pray for every driver that is involved in cutting our children, my father, from school school or to school, that Lord your anointing will come upon them that Lord your grace will rest upon them, that the spirit of responsibility will come upon the concerned oh God, that they will be careful as they carry the future of this nation, we pray for our roads almighty father, we rebuke every demons of black spots in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and Lord we pray that in your wisdom and in your power you will intervene in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord we pray that we will not hear stories of children accidents again. We will not hear of families buried together. We will not hear of siblings living in, 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 in before time. We pray for your intervention, Almighty Father. And we pray for every young one that is here today. That Lord, they will fulfill their days. They will fulfill their full years, Almighty Father. We rebuke the spirit that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And we declare that our children will live long. We declare that we will not bury any more of our children but they will live long to bury us oh God they will live long to fulfill their days because you are able to do you say Lord you will satisfy us with the length of days almighty father we pray that you will fulfill your promise in Kenya that there will be length of days that Lord there will be a stoppage of this carnage any spirit that is responsible we bind you in the name of Jesus that spirit of accident and destruction we rebuke you today in agreement in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray, oh God, for the families that have lost dear ones in such a way that your hand of strength will come upon them. And in 
in, their, in your own wisdom, oh God, you will restore their hearts and heal them. We thank you because, Lord, you are the healer of the brokenhearted. May you heal these families, oh God, and may your grace be sufficient even for wisdom to prevail. We pray specifically for the minister of education, oh God, at such a time when there are so many reports of accidents of children, we pray that, Lord, you will wake him up and strengthen him, that he will not watch as things are messed up, but that, Lord, you will encourage and strengthen him. We pray for the wisdom from you that will come upon him and his policy makers, that, Lord, there will be a clear change and that they will not be quiet, but they will speak out so that your will will prevail, Almighty Father, and there will be safety for our children. May you protect their visions, oh God. We come against every demons that are in invading the youths, bringing wicked habits, Almighty Father, and recklessness and carelessness, oh God. As we have heard the testimony of Joe, we pray that there will be such testimonies in this generation. Testimony of young ones coming to you. Testimony of young ones coming to church, being a transformation generation, oh God. They will not be called the lost generation, but they will be the generation of wisdom and power. And your name shall be exalted in their midst. We thank you because you will do it for us, Lord. And we believe you because you are faithful. When we call on you, you answer. May your name be glorified. We thank you and we honor you, O oh God. And we leave this in your able hands, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Apostle. Uh, Peter Thuo, I know your family, but you've uh, stood and prayed with us. I'm going to ask that uh, we take our seats. Um, we are going to have um, a hymn, uh, a song, and I'm going to ask if the, the team that is leading us in worship, you can come and take us through one song. And, and after we do that song, we are going to have uh, uh, the announcements uh, that are going to do. We we'll invite the MCs back to come and do the announcements. Let's have a hymn followed by the announcements uh, moving forward. Thank you. good. He remains good forever. And that is why we can boldly say that it is well with our souls because he is God.
Chavakali family that are here you requested that is uh, the parents the students you requested to meet uh, immediately after we are done in this room with the board of uh, management so kindly remain behind for that uh, particular meeting I'd also like to extend a hand of help that has been extended to us from uh, the Kenya Counseling and Psychology Association who've asked anybody, especially the youth, who might uh, require counseling services, you can reach out to my uh, core moderator, Nashipai, who you've all seen. You can still stand, Nashipai. So you can just reach out to Nashipai. These services will be offered mostly next week. So for uh, the Chavakali parents that are around, the neighbors, uh, parents whose sons and daughters might require counseling services kindly note that uh, these will be available starting next week and you can hand over your names to Nashipai or if you're in any of the groups that were formed uh, for these uh, particular farewell then please put in your names there uh, the other thing is
is uh, we still continue with our meetings at Blue Springs Hotel along Faker Road. So today we will still have a meeting there at 6.30. And then tomorrow we will have another one. And we will also have uh, Mogidi artists uh, that will be doing something tomorrow on behalf of Joe and uh, of course uh, Karebi. Uh, that will be happening tomorrow also at uh, Blue Springs Hotel. We also have a condolences book that is at the back of the room. We would appreciate if you can just leave a note, say something we would really, really appreciate. And to wind, I'd like to remind you that we will be resting our brother Joe on Friday in Embu. The cottage will leave KU uh, uh, Memorial Hospital along uh, Thicker Road on Friday at 7.30 a.m. And uh, we are hoping to be in Embu by 10 a.m. when the service will start. So we are urging people to be there as early as possible. So we've been asking people to at least be with us from 6.30 a.m. so that we can keep time. So that's it. Uh, as far as announcements are concerned, Nashipai, I'd like to welcome you back. And apologies, I know this has gone on longer than uh, we all anticipated, but uh, it's for the love that we had for Joe, and we couldn't uh, uh, literally cut off any of you. So thank you very much, and uh, let's welcome back Nashipai. Thank you very much, Sami, for a job well done. I know it's not easy for you as an uncle and very close to Joe. Ladies and gentlemen, we are getting <laughs> towards the end of our service today. And a lot of thank you to all of you for being patient with us and uh, standing with us as a family. I would like to request Rose to join me on stage. Um, she's going to give us, she's going to do the vote of thanks. Rose is one of the ladies who was with Mama Jo when the news came and I know it's not been easy. Thank you for standing with our sister. Good afternoon everyone. Good afternoon again. So my name is Rose. I'm Wangari's friend and Noso Mwadulos. And I'm here to give a word of thanks. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone who's here. I know it's a tricky day since it's a working day, but we all availed ourselves physically because of your time and your presence. Thank you so much. Let's clap for ourselves. <clears throat> we also know that there are so many people watching us online. It was not possible for everyone to be here, so thank you so much for the online family and for following the service. We are so indebted to Nairobi Chapel and so grateful this is where Joe was fellowshipping. We also want to thank the leadership of uh, Reverend Kabibi for being with us at home, even at church. Thank you so much for being Joe's friend and a pastor. Sitam Karen, this is where we are. Thank you for hosting us. We are so grateful. We also want to thank the clergy for your continued support. Both families, Mwadulos and Wangaris, we are so grateful. Thank you for standing with Wangari and Mwadulo. We also want to thank the Word of Life. This is where Joe was frequenting all uh, his holidays. And we know that it will not be easy for you without Joe. Personally, I've been there. I have dropped Joe several times. And I know it is not easy for you. So thank you so much for being his pillar, for leading him in ways of the Lord. And uh, we know that uh, parents, I urge you, if you can make your way to Word of Life. I don't know whether there's someone here from Word of Life. Uh, Mikal, I saw some people here from Word of Life. If you can maybe get contacts, every holiday they have a very nice camp. My kids also go there and I can tell you it has an impact on kids. Thank you so much for that family. Uh, we also want to thank you for, uh, we want, sorry, we want to thank uh, His Excel Excellency, the Deputy President, Rigavi, and even um, Governor Fonieri, 
Kahiga Mutahi for standing with the family. Thank you so much. We cannot forget Mbogi Yadulo. Mabeste Mko. Mabeste Adulo Mko. Thank you so much for standing with us. And uh, we also want to thank the Chapakali family, the board, parents, and also the boys. Thank you so much for availing yourselves. Green Gardens, we're so grateful. Kikuyu neighbors, thank you so much. We have had ushers here. Thank you so much for assisting. And also thank the planning committee. We know it is not easy. And we pray that uh, we continue doing so until we lay Joe to rest. Thank you so much uh, to the theater for the artist, Mogivi, and also the country family, we are so grateful. We cannot thank everyone in person because we know that each and every person has played a part. All we can say is thank you so much, let's pray for the family, and let's continue standing with the family. Long live Dulo. Thank you. Asante Sana Rose. After this, we'll have the benediction, and uh, then we'll... Uh, uh, come to the end of our prayer meeting and before the benediction I am not here to preach but I would like to encourage Wangari book of Psalms 29 and verse 10 says that the Lord sits above the waters and in these many waters he will make sure that you do not drown he will hold you up and he will give you the strength to sail through it's not easy we are here with you, we will walk with you the journey, and I believe that despite everything, God will hold you up and hold you together. Uh, and also, Mr. Modulo, um, Apostle Duo, kindly come and give us the benediction. Um, there is one thing that uh, I, I spoke to mothers from Kisumu yesterday and they called and they said, when you get a chance, please tell Mama Jo we are together and we pass our condolences. That is the team from Kisumu that laid the wreath. And also the ladies from um, Kid Pharmaco, they say...